Hello and welcome to episode 52 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that cloud computing has been a great equaliser of innovation and the competitive playing field among entrepreneurs, small business owners, mid-sized organisations and large enterprises to tap into AI has been balanced. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here and this is a good topic I think calling to calling into question what we, we should be doing with our AI besides just talking about it. It certainly does. I mean, opening question, are we putting too many of our eggs in the AI basket do you think? Yeah, you think? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, you, you really can't go to a conference anymore. Uh, you hear about the revolutionary aspect of artificially intelligent things. And um, I've been, you know, dealing, building AI platforms since I got out of college, and, and I'm no spring chicken. And the reality is, is that uh, while there is some applicable use cases for this technology, and we really can't apply it uh, everywhere and anywhere, and really it's, it's not revolutionary, it's more evolutionary. And people need to figure out, you know, where it fits into their organization, how they're going to deal with predictive analytics, leveraging AI aspects of it, you know, how they're going to do things like risk analytics and also fraud detection with AI-based systems without overusing the technology. I see it uh, used in lots of odd use cases where procedural programming technology would work just fine and probably easier to work just fine, where you're dealing with kind of rules and events, things like that, not necessarily need learning models. But I think we're going to have to kind of hit a wall uh, in terms of how we're overusing this stuff, and people are going to normalize it and build it into the infrastructure. So hopefully we're not going to be talking about it too much in about three years. It'll just be doing the work. Yeah, it's so true. It's something that should sit behind the scenes, but obviously you need to have a clear understanding of why you're using it and what the outputs are of using it. And I think you're right. There seems to be so many, so much noise going on out there at the moment with people talking about AI, especially on Twitter and, and places like that. Um, you know, and it's... Uh, it's just become really messy, isn't it? That people really, certainly smaller organisations are thinking, well, we need it, but what do we need it for? What's it going to be doing? Where's the where's the heavy lifting? What's the output that we're expecting to get from it? So, you know, having a clear mission and an understanding of what, what good it's going to do to businesses is really key. But what else do you see that, that, that small businesses and mid-sized organisations really need to be getting out of, you know, the artificial intelligent market, Dave? Well, you just got the core of it. I mean, even it, the fact of the matter that you can do use it uh, doesn't mean you should. And you really have to ask the should question. What are we using it for? What's the business outcome? What's going to be the benefit? The, the thing with, with, with uh, small to medium-sized businesses and artificially intelligent stuff that we have within these cloud computing systems right now, they were priced out of that market, you know, as little as five years ago. Now they're not priced out of it. Now we can leverage very... Uh, impactful, you know, AI systems, put them in place and actually, um, uh, you know, solve real problems using this technology. But the reality is we should ask ourselves, should we do it? Is this going to have a business outcome and a business benefit? And for the majority of, of the applications that I see of AI technology these days, they're typically done around the hype. They're enamored with the capabilities of the technology. And it's probably uh, not a good fit. It's contraindicated for the kinds of problem domains that are in there. That doesn't mean they shouldn't push the limits on the technology, and that doesn't mean they don't need AI technology at one particular time. We, I always get frustrated when I have these conversations because everybody thinks in binary ways. If you know they're using AI technology, and I point out the fact that that's probably not a good fit for that technology, they consider that as a as a decree that they shouldn't be using AI tech technology ever, and that's not ever going to be the case. You have to use the right technology to solve the right problems. And I think small businesses have a tendency to be a little less, um, with the word, how should I look at, uh, disciplined uh, in terms of leveraging technology, because now we have a smorgasbord of technology that's in that essence free that we're leveraging from these various cloud providers. So be curious and explore the platforms. You know, size can be an advantage when using AI to launch your business. You can use AI as a disruptor if you're leveraging you know, technology as a force multiplier. All that's viable stuff, but watch where you're applying this technology because you're going to end up paying, uh, you know, three or four million dollars for a system that may only need to cost you a half a million dollars if you're using the technology in improper ways. Yeah, and it, it goes back to I completely agree. It goes back to one thing you mentioned in the Australia show with sort of need and value, 
And I think that's really, you know, a, a, the key. So one of the key things there, isn't it? Is it, do you need it, and what's the value you're going to be paying, and the value you're going to get as the return on that investment? So I think they're they, they're key points there as well. So yeah, very very valuable points, and it brings us on nicely actually to your top three tips around this, Dave, because I'm sure that people are going to really want to know, you know, where can they save, what can they do, and the, the top three tips have a, a lot of value as always. <laughs> Yeah, the first one is what we discussed. I mean, look for the right applications for artificially intelligent technology, whether it's called machine learning, uh, smart predictive analytics. There's all kinds of little terms we're putting on top of it right now. Make sure that it's something that's going to benefit from building a knowledge model. In other words, a learning model is going to be something that's going to deliver a much better outcome at uh, one week, two weeks, two months, two years into the future as we build up this, this knowledge and this intelligence. Cloud-based AI is not always a fit. And so one of the things people have a tendency to do is say, we're going to use AI basically as a force multiplier, or we're going to use it out of the cloud where it's cheap. Or in many instances, some of the on-premise systems, some of the open source AI stuff, you know, may be a better fit. I mean, some of the systems I built, you know, five, you know, five years ago and the machine learning was Mahut, and that was an open, open source uh, 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 system that was uh, fairly limited in, in what it was able to do, but it worked perfectly fine for building a recommendation engine for a larger customer. And that was the case where we basically made the decision not to put stuff in the cloud and put things on premise because we had better performance there, we had better outcomes, and also it ended up to be cheaper. And cloud's not always like least expensive. And keep an eye on costs. I think we're gonna see some huge bills that are run up by you know people who are um, you know using AI willy-nilly and not necessarily monitoring the cost aspects of it and I think that you need to make sure that you have cost metrics cost analysis cost governance so you're not necessarily going to run your project aground because you run out of budget because you're spending too much AWS dollars yes and uh, AWS, people in AWS love people spending AWS dollars don't they that's the, the big sort of yeah. <laughs> Any, any, any business wants people to spend money on their platforms, but I don't think uh, businesses want people to get in trouble with, this, with that spending. Yeah, yeah, I think you've, you've raised some very good points there, Dave. And um, it's, uh, it's a real tricky one, isn't it? I mean, what's a, what's a key piece of advice you'll give to a C-level in a, in a sort of a mid-level management thing? I, mean, I know we've covered our three top tips, but is there a, a really poignant piece of uh, advice you'd give to a, a C-level on this one? Yeah, it would be asked questions. I think that uh, the C-levels, the CEOs and the COOs and the CFOs need to question the use of this technology. I mean, um, we're getting into kind of the realm of behavior like we did in the late 90s where, you know, it was kind of a drunken party, um, you know, with the, the amount of technology that's coming forward. And here we have the same opportunities to leverage technology, like I said, which is almost free. But it's not. We have to spend time on it. We have to do the testing. We have to uh, negotiate the license agreements. We have to do lots of things that are going to cost us additional money. And so the reality is that we need to think about what this is going to have as a proactive benefit to the company. And people have to start asking those questions. They're not appreciated, but uh, if you're running a company, it's, it's, it's your responsibility. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Dave, thank you for your top tips and that bonus one there. I really appreciate that. And thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week, as always. My pleasure. Fantastic. And thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. You can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everything like that. So come and join the conversation. Lots of social media going out. David writes some awesome blogs for us as well, which you can find on the website. There's a link below. And they're all over Twitter and Facebook and everywhere like that as well. So check them out. Um, what else? I don't know. We're on Stitcher and iTunes, which I always seem to forget to mention. Uh, now and again so uh, yeah come and check us out there as well so you can listen to us as well as watch us as well um, yeah you know thanks for watching and until next week <laughs>